So tonight I'm going to be exploring some acetate and technically this is an acetate alternative um, and it's made by graphics. Acetate is a clear film that artists use. Uh, actually, I really haven't seen too many artists use it. I'm sorry, I'm looking around for a pair of scissors while I talk. This will work because it's uh, shrink wrapped. Um, it's a clear film that artists can use, and since I was doing so many marker paper tests, I thought it would be fun to mess around on acetate and see if I can't find markers that work well on it. Uh, especially since I had some pretty decent success with Yupo. Um, and if you're interested in seeing the markers I used on Yupo and how they all handle, and they all handle a little bit differently, you ought to check out the other videos in this playlist. All right, so, <laughs> took some doing, but I think I got it open. Now, this is a polyester film. It's archival, non-tearing, supposedly lays flat, and is heat resistant. So if you're a stamper, um, you might be able to use your heat gun on this without it giving, without it bubbling up. Ooh, and it is a lot like transparencies. See if I can get it there. So you can't even really see it this. The thing I'm waving around, that is the acetate. And underneath, I'm sorry, is like a sheet of tracing paper just to kind of protect it because uh, it's very staticky. Now I have 12 medium weight sheets. So I'm going to sacrifice one of these sheets to playing around. And the reason I'm doing that is if I'm going, if this doesn't work, I want to know as soon as possible. And uh, I don't want to get invested in making something and have it just not, you know, waste all that time. So right now we have a very shiny, very shiny sheet of acetate. It's completely clear. So if I wanted to, I could put my line art underneath. Um, and I have several types of markers. I have pit pins, which are India ink and permanent when dry. They're water-based. I have al alcohol markers. I have uh, Zig brushables, which are also water-based and permanent once dry. I have a couple blenders for pigment markers, which are ethanol-based. I have the pigment markers over here. Uh, I'm grabbing a couple of the Zig Art and Graphic Twins, which are pretty comparable to Tombow ABTs, which are very popular amongst crafters right now. Sorry, I'm trying to grab enough so that I have a decent blend of color. Okay. Zig Art and Graphic Twin. Now, the problem with those, and I noticed this on the Yupo, is that um, on plastic papers, they never really dry. So they may not be suitable, but I wanted to test them anyway. And then I have a few ethanol-based pigment markers. And I have a Tombow ABT blender and a alcohol marker blender. So, I'm gonna get started. Let's pull in here. I'm sorry about the glare, but unfortunately that's just the nature of the beast. So we've got some alcohol markers now. So I guess I will start with seeing how these blend. Now, that first color, it went down so light, I don't even know if it went down. Let me zoom into the area. And the smell of alcohol is very strong. It's a little hard to see. Seems to sit on the surface of the paper. In fact, the only one you can really see well is the um, peony. So I'm gonna try blending between the two. And you can see that it pretty much um, just takes all of the, sorry, I'm cleaning my marker off right now. This could be used as like a blending surface because it will pretty much just pick up what you've put down and um, 
put it on your tip. There is no soaking into the paper. Um, I think it picks up even more than the Yupo did. Now I'm looking. Oh, a China marker might work better. Let's see. Sorry, I'm looking for a pin that will mark on the surface so I can make notes. Because I refer to my notes when I uh, go and do the paper test itself. All right, so let's do a line of color and we'll allow it to dry before we put the other color on top of it. And it probably takes... I mean, it's alcohol marker, so it should dry quicker than your water-based markers, but it still probably takes a little while to dry. So I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'm gonna try to blend the two together. And I guess while I'm doing that, I might as well start in with the brushables, and I'll make a note. Oh, I'm putting down my brushables and it's actually kind of hard to see because the paper is so reflective. Now brushables are permanent when dry too. Some of these are not brushables. Some of them are scroll and brush, but I think they use the same inks as the brushables. Having trouble finding certain colors. And I apologize if I get kind of quiet. It's just because I'm <laughs> thinking about what I'm doing. So actually, let's go with the darker green. This is going to be a hard test to do because I have to pull out so that you can see everything. Okay, so we're using alcohol marker, blending marker. Um, and this is a Prismacolor on top of some dried alcohol marker. Now we're gonna do it while it's wet. So I need to note that this was dry. And you really need to clean your blender marker off after you do this because it will really stain your brush. So it looks like we get a cleaner application when it's wet into wet rather than dry over, I mean wet on top of dry. Now we're going to try blending. Gotta clean that off. And I'll try blending out with this as well keep grabbing the wrong tip and I wanted to do some layering tests and I think dry is the best way to go this means I have to put it down and let it wait and let's see how that blender handles way over there that's wet. Oh, wet. And then we need to do it dry. And I hope um, this sort of, <laughs> I mean, I'm demonstrating the paper, yeah. But I'm what I'm really demonstrating is how I systematically go about testing different markers on paper before I even do um, my first field test. I think this is a really useful skill to have. Mm, acetate dries a little quicker than you bow, it seems like. Okay, so it seems like the brushables don't really layer too well. Uh, it seems to pick it up, whereas the marker um, can layer all right, but you probably can't go back and forth with color. So basically, once you've applied your color, you can't go on top of it with a lighter color unless you're trying to pick up the color you had down. 
sorry. And that, of course, is going to cause a shadow. Oh, it's tight on something. Sorry. Didn't, didn't mean to do that. It's annoying. I was hoping to plug in the camera, but it seems like that's not going to be a good option. And I seem, and am, I, uh, and feel all over the place. Okay, so next thing I'm going to kind of test out are the pit pins. And those are another water-based marker that is permanent when dry. So we're going to do wet and wet first. And not all colors are created equal when it comes to putting down ink because this yellow and this yellow did fine, but orange glaze 113 did not do so well. Now we'll try a little back and forth blending. And we'll I blend out. Oh, I should have grabbed the other one because even though this one's oh, darker and you can see it better, it doesn't do as good a job putting down ink. And let's see how this works with the dry. So this is pretty much like messing around with a dry erase marker right now. Let's try layering. So I gotta let that dry. And while I'm doing that, I'll start removing some of what I'm using from play so I don't get confused. And, um... This will stay wet forever. I'm pretty much just doing the same tests over and over between markers. So right now I am blending colors while wet. Before I was trying to see how readily colors would blend into each other without me actively doing anything. Now with these, I've had a problem with these in the past, um, sort of like spreading out on the paper and going way out of their zone. So I'm gonna grab a couple of drastically different colors and I'm gonna put them down next to each other and uh, see if that changes anything. And I'll probably mark, I'm going to mark with a pen where each one was originally put spread test. <sighs> of course. Of course you'd roll on top of it. At least it didn't do anything now. Now I need to do a blending test when dry. And I can go back to this layering test way down here on the bottom with pit pens. That's the second layer. Allow that to dry. And I'll just grab a different color for the third, because that orange isn't working out so well. And I'm just trying to see how you can tell when the marker is dry. Because there's nowhere for it to soak into. See, it's still wet, it's on my finger. <laughs> Um, there's no one for the marker to soak into, so it takes a while while I'm doing this. So, the pit pin sort of layer, but not really. So right now, it's really looking like, um... Only the alcohol markers will really work on this, and even that isn't a hundred percent. Because as soon as you hit it with a light color or 
a colorless blender, it wipes it away like a, an eraser board. So the last thing we have are the pigment markers. And these are really like using a dry erase marker because that chisel tip is exactly like dry erase markers. And these are ethanol based, so they're not the usual alcohol found in alcohol based markers. So they might behave a little differently. Let's go with the dark red because I want to clean the blender out anyway. So this is the colorless blender while dry. I mean, while wet, applied while wet. As you can see, it's like uh, expanding outward. So let's do the white blender while wet. Mm, that's neat. That's the one you start getting opacity and buildup is with the white. Of course you gotta clean it. So that's gonna be the dry test. So I have to let those dry and I'm gonna start layering to see how that works. Now out of curiosity, I'm gonna go ahead and pull my Copic out and let it dry and then put the um, white blender on top to see how that works. I kind of have a feeling it's gonna pull it up, but I'm interested to see. So, oh, that's dry, all right, sure. So it does reactivate it and actually it does a very pretty blend. Okay, so, the red is dry. All right, next layer goes on this bottom thing right here. And that has to dry. So I'm going to test out, oh yeah, I have this right here, the um, Zig Art and Graphic Twin, which I need to do another layer on. And I'll just put down some Pintel and let that dry and see if the white blender reactivates it as well. And you can tell if something's dried for the most part, um, if it has like that wet sheen. Now, um, alcohol markers will definitely continue to give off that wet sheen. Um, the water-based markers up here will continue to give off that wet sheen. These will definitely give off a wet sheen, um, but it looks different. You can tell when there's puddles by the way it reflects the light. Um, and just experience and messing around with it will help you decide when it's ready for another layer. Of course, you know, when you apply another layer, it just dry erase erases. And the pit pin reactivates with the ethanol too. So it's really looking like this, this kind of paper is going to be a real challenge because it's got a perfectly smooth surface. Um, so everything just sits on the very top. There are no uh, level, no bumps or texture for things to soak into. So when you scrub or even just gently rub your pen on top of it, it, um, it, pretty much wipes everything off. Uh, with the pigment markers, you, when you apply the white, the colorless blender, when it's wet, it does have like, um, it sort of dissipates into the pigment. Whereas when you apply it after the pigment ink has dried, it's like a clean dry erase sort of a stroke. And that's pretty much all I've got so far with this paper test. Um, I, I will probably think for a while about this paper before I try to proceed with a, um, like a, a more rendered out test because I'm not sure what paper will work on it. 
So once again, just a quick overview of the markers I used. I used alcohol. I used Zig brushables, which are water-based, permanent when dry. I think they might be India ink, but I could be wrong. I used Faber-Castell pit pens, which are India ink. Um, they are also water-based and permanent when dry. I used Zig Art and Graphic Twin, which are water-based, and they're prone to smearing on these kinds of papers because they are water-based and they make no promises of being permanent when dry. Um, and I used pigment markers, which are ethanol-based, um, and they're fairly new and people are still figuring out how to use them. If you guys found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you left a like and considered subscribing to my channel. If you enjoy my videos in general and would like more content like this, um, I suggest you check a, head over to my Patreon um, and check that out because the money I raise on the Patreon not only goes towards keeping my lights on and paying my bills, you know, paying me for my time, uh, but it also goes to buying the supplies necessary for these sort of reviews. So I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you later with another marker test. Bye!